Hey, it's good to see you tonight. We are glad that you were here. Thank you for being at church tonight. Looking forward to a good time. Let's stand together and join in singing. Come ahead, Brother DJ. Take your hymn books. It'll be page 283, song 283, Joy Unspeakable. Amen. Joy Unspeakable on that first verse. We'll sing it out. I have found us grace is all complete. He supplieth every need. While I sit and learn at Jesus' feet, I am free as yes, free indeed. It is joy unspeakable and full of glory, full of glory, full of glory. It is joy unspeakable and full of glory and the half has been yet been told on that second I have found the pleasure I once craved it is joy and peace within what a wondrous blessing I am saved from the awful gulf of sin it is joy unspeakable and full of glory full of glory full of glory it is joy unspeakable and full of glory, oh, the half has never yet been told. On that third, I have found that hope so bright and clear, living in the realm of grace. Oh, the warm Savior's presence is so near, I can see his smiling face. It is joy unspeakable and full of glory, full of glory. Full of glory, it is joy unspeakable and full of glory. Oh, the half has never yet been told. On, uh, go ahead and shake hands this evening. of joy unspeakable. Ready? I have found the joy no tongue can tell how it waves of glory roll. It is like a great or flowing well springing up within my soul. It is joy unspeakable and full of glory, full of glory, full of glory. It is joy unspeakable and full of glory, oh, the half has never yet been told. Amen. Thank you. You can be seated. We'll have a word of prayer in just a moment. Appreciate you being here tonight. And I get to announce tonight that Josiah and Madison had their little baby, Conrad. I don't remember the middle name. Conrad? Conrad Joseph. Conrad Joseph Allen made his debut on 7-11-22, and he weighed 7-11. Isn't that pretty good? And they got to go home this afternoon, this evening, so uh, hey, everything's going well. They're going to take him back tomorrow and check him out for, for jaundice and all that kind of stuff that usually goes on with little babies, but uh, keep praying for them. Uh, but uh, it's good to have uh, a new baby in the church family. <laughs> all right. Hey, don't forget we have summer revival starting this week. It actually starts on Saturday. Saturday we have our soul winning clinic, and it's us, y'all. It's us. Um, 
and I'll talk to, that, talk to you about that in a little bit. But it starts at 9, from 9 to 12, then we'll have lunch, you know, sandwiches and chips and time of fellowship. And, and uh, so we want to do that on Saturday. If you've raised your hand to let us know that you're going to be here, that's great. If you weren't here or didn't, you know, let me know, let my wife know. We just want to make sure that we have enough food on Saturday. And also, I believe my wife is still looking for someone to help keep the younger ones uh, the nursery's taken care of, but if you'd like to help keep the little ones with her on Saturday, that certainly would be a blessing. Just let her know. Uh, and then uh, Brother Treadway will be with us on Sunday. And on Sunday, we're going to have all of the adults in the auditorium for Sunday school. That's going to be college and career up, high school and down. We'll have regular Sunday school. But, but uh, College and Up will be in here uh, for Sunday school. On Sunday, Brother Treadway will be teaching, and then he'll be preaching the morning service, the evening service, and Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Looking forward to a great time uh, this week. And I, I just want you to be in prayer for revival. Pray for our church. Pray for, uh, pray for each of us individually that God would speak to our hearts. And then also we have coming up a week from this Saturday, a week from this coming Saturday on the 23rd, we've got Bible Distribution Day at the Walmart in Walker. Walker Walmart from 11 to 2. If you'd like to come out and help pass out Bibles and pass out tracts there until they get run off. <laughs> uh, but uh, Walker Walmart from 11 to 2 on July the 23rd. And then uh, that will finish us up on, <laughs> with July. Oh, we got a we got an ice cream thing this Sunday, don't we? Ice cream party Sunday night, so that'll be a blessing. I, I read today, I read today, I got something in the mail. It was for preachers. You ought to know it's for preachers. The average amount of ice cream that a person eats per year 23 gallons the average person 23 gallons y'all must be eating a lot of ice cream because i don't eat near that much i talk about it a lot but i don't eat near that much so y'all must be eating a whole lot of 20 can you imagine 23 gallons of ice cream per per person in the united states a year some folks are eating some ice cream Um, but we'll have a good time of fellowship on uh on saturday on on sorry on saturday yeah, we'll have that too, Saturday for lunch, and then Sunday night after church. Then we've got Mission Conference coming up in August. Mission Conference coming up in August, and um, I just got to share this with you. Just found out last week that uh, Brother Chitty's dad is going to be passing through, uh, taking his sister to college over at PCC, and he's going to be here. Wednesday night a mission conference. So I said, well, there's another missionary, missionary to the Navajo Indians. So we've got four missionaries now. Now, Brother Chitty doesn't even know that I'm going to ask him to speak or present his, present his work. But uh, Brother Chitty is going to be here on Wednesday night. Brother Ruben Murillo is going to be here. Uh, J.J. Spielman to Ukraine and Brother Ogle with Teaching All Nations. And, you know, all these men are experienced. All these men except Brother J.J. We've had Brother J.J. here, uh, but all of these men have been in ministry for a long time. Brother Chitty pastoring, Brother Reuben pastoring, uh, Brother Ogle pastoring, and then we've got Brother Spielman going to Ukraine. Then we'll have the International Supper on, um, on Saturday night like we do and then have a big day on Sunday as well. So make sure that you're here for Mission Conference August 20th. 24th to 28th. That's that last Wednesday through the last Sunday in August. And um, yeah, I know it's kind of back to back with July revival and, and August mission conference. But if you'll remember, we had an October uh, revival schedule. That's why I went ahead and threw this one in, <laughs> went ahead and kept it there. I was thinking about moving it to later on, moving the mission conference to later in the fall. But this year we were supposed to have an August, I'm sorry, an October revival, but that didn't work out. And so anyway, the month to month, back to back, and that's okay. The Lord knows. All right, would you take out your prayer request sheet, your, uh, your prayer sheet tonight? <clears throat> and some folks we need to uh, continue to pray for. Just want to give you a few updates. Uh, we've got uh, Brother, Brother Kraft is still um, you know, dealing with the effects of COVID, still having some issues, tired, tiredness. So continue to pray for Brother Kraft Dunaway. Uh, it's good to see Miss Libby here tonight. Uh, good to see her. Continue to pray for her. She recovers from knee surgery. Uh, Brother Danny's having some heart issues, and so we want to pray for Brother Danny. He's uh, wearing a hot heart monitor. They're going to they're going to check him out and see what's going on there. So we certainly need to pray for Brother Danny with the with the heart issues that he's got going on. Uh, great, great answer to prayer there in the middle column. We have got Joseph Pace. He went to the doctor today, you know, and uh, he's the doctor said his heart is. 
super strong for a little for a little guy, what, two years old or something like that? He said, it's not a heart murmur, it's just that it's he's super strong. So that's a great answer to prayer there. Uh, Joseph's not having any problems with his heart, so praise the Lord for that. Uh, for our uh, unspoken requests, our unspoken requests there, uh, we've, got, we've added uh, a couple, and uh, we've got some, church, we've got some serious prayer requests. We've got some serious needs for some of our folk. And, uh, and some of our church family and some of our friends. And so would you be sure and pray for those? I know that you don't know, but there are some health issues that are very, very serious. And so uh, they'd rather not mention it. And so would you pray for those health needs? That certainly would be a blessing. Um, continue to pray for Miss Victoria. She was having tests run to see uh, how far the cancer had spread in her body. Uh, then Mr. Con Little Conrad Allen, uh, we put him there. Seven pounds, 11 ounces. Pray for little Conrad and pray for Madison recovering there. And then Brother Clayton Robinson, continue. we want to pray for Brother Clayton. He's, he was having some tiredness. And, and uh, any word there, Miss Rob? Not been? Okay, can somebody tell me what she said? I don't have my hearing aid in. Goes to the doctor tomorrow. Okay, I wasn't sure if she, they were able to move that up. So uh, pray for Brother Clayton. Uh, Miss Moser, Miss Jennifer has also contracted COVID, and so we want to pray for her. Uh, Brother Larry had an MRI today. It's good to see him at church tonight, uh, but continue to pray for him. He's got a bulging disc in his back. Got to see some more doctors to, to determine what they're going to do with that. So pray for Brother Larry. And then Brother Sonny is here to, tonight. Put him back on the prayer sheet, and he showed up for church. Amen. Uh, that's a blessing, but he finally is getting his strength back from fighting against COVID, so thank the Lord. It's good to see Brother Sonny back in his place after a couple of weeks. On our non-church members, would you add two names, please? Non-church members, would you add Pamela Carpenter? Pamela Carpenter. This is the lady I got to talk to today. I had talked to her a couple of years ago, and uh, we had a visitor on Sunday, Brother Joseph Bourgeois, who used to ride our bus, used to ride our buses back in the day. We were trying to figure out. He thinks he rode, rode Brother Mac's bus. He thinks it's Brother Mac. It's been a long time. But uh, he was talking to me about this lady, and, and, and he reached out to her and reached out to me and kind of put the two together. And uh, she's gone through a lot, has some health issues, and she's lost her husband and all kinds of things going on. Of course, she just lives right over here off Stephendale, somewhere back over there, and and, of course, went through the flood as well, and then her husband died, and so on and so forth. And, and she was really reaching out. Well, I got to talk to her a little bit, and she said, you know, I didn't grow up in church. My folks never talk, took me to church. But when she got in some serious issues here recently in her life, she began watching on TV. And uh, she said, I, 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 she didn't say I got saved, but I got, she said, I got God. And, and I know the next thing I need to do is get baptized. I said, well, let me talk to you. And so I went through the plan of salvation with her. And she's nodded her head. And, she, and when I got to the end there and said, this is what we do to, to trust Christ. She said, that's what I did. That's what I did. And I want to get baptized. <laughs> I said, well, that's the next step. And um, so pray for her. And pray for her sister. Her sister also is having some issues. I have not met her sister. Uh, she may come. She said she may come tonight. Now, uh, if, she, if she comes, she's got a little service dog. I hope that doesn't fright you. It's a little chihuahua-looking dog. Um, but, uh, you know, she's just got so, some, some issues. And I asked her to come. And so we'll see. We'll see if that uh, we'll see if that ever happens. But we want to pray for Pamela Carpenter, and then also if you would add this name, Miss Miriam Salvi. Miriam Salvi. This is Miss Dot Seymour's good friend at the nursing home. Miss um, Dot calls her calls Miss Miriam her eyes because Miss Dot can't see to get around very well most of the time, <clears throat> and Miss Miriam leads her around and. Uh, they've given me a tour of the facility there. But uh, Miss Miriam was in the hospital. I went searching yesterday to, at the hospitals and making phone calls. Could not find her. She wound up making it back to the nursing home. But she has been diagnosed with cirrhosis of the liver. And um, so we want to pray for Miss Miriam Salvi. 
sweet, sweet lady. Her dad's a pastor. Her dad was a pastor. And uh, she, she's grown up in church. She knows the Lord. And we've tried to talk her into coming sometime with Miss, uh, with Miss Dot, but hasn't happened yet. But pray for Miss Miriam Salvi, just a sweet, sweet lady there. Then also on our uh, uh, non-church members there, Miss Rose Goodson is listed as one of our non-church members. She had surgery, but she's doing a whole lot better. We need to continue to pray for Miss Rose. And then also, if you would pray for little Asher, Luce, did I say that right? Okay. So with the G instead of an L. Okay. All right. Uh, so we want to pray for a little Asher. That's the Nap's great grandson. Pray for him. He's having test run. Got a place on the back of his head, and uh, having some test runs. So pray for a little Asher there. Also, we want to pray for Mr. Joe Bridges. Uh, this is Miss Felicia's uncle who was in the uh, accident, uh, fell from the ladder, and is having reconstructive surgery. Continue to pray for Mr. Joe Bridges. Mr. Stephen Tuberville is one of our bus parents, and he's been diagnosed with cancer. And uh, his, little, his little son, his son, uh, comes faithfully and is going to go with Brother John. Uh, next week, Brother John is not skipping out on revival. Next week, Brother John is taking some of our bus kids to what's called man camp. Man camp, brother, brother Andrews Sr., brother Jeremiah Andrews' dad. Brother Andrews has, uh, has a camp just for boys, teaching them to be men. And, and we've taken, brother John has taken some of our bus kids up there in the past, and he's going to do it again. And it just happens to fall during our revival. He asked me about it, and I said that would be fine. But uh, they're going to man camp, and his little boy is going to man camp. So that'll be a, that'll be a blessing there. So pray, let's pray for uh, Mr. Stephen as he recovers, and pray for the man camp as well. In the middle column there, some of you remember Brother T.J. Reeves. That's what we called him now. He goes by D- Daryl. But uh, Brother Daryl is, uh, I don't know if he's in town or not. I heard this from Vardaman Huckabee. Brother Vardaman texted me and said that Daryl's dad is not doing well. Daryl's dad lives here in Baton Rouge. And every once in a while, you know, he'll pass through visiting his dad. But uh, his dad is not doing well at all. I don't think he's expected to live. So let's pray for Daryl Reeves' dad. Pray for the family there. And uh, I'll be honest with you, I'm not sure about his salvation. I'm not sure about his salvation, so pray for him. We got a good report from, uh, from Dee Dee concerning Miss B today. Miss B is doing, doing better. Um, the, the, the cancer numbers are not good. They're not improving. But uh, she's doing better. They're, they're going to maybe do some other treatments. But uh, she's in good spirits again. So continue to pray for Miss B. It was, a good, it was a good text that we got today concerning her. Okay? All right, y'all. Well, let's spend a few minutes in prayer for these folks. Let's pray specifically for these folks. And then I'll close the prayer time out in just a moment. Lord, I thank you for the opportunity now at this time to intercede for these folks. And Lord, I thank you for great answers to prayer and and taking care of our church family, those that have dealt with COVID. It's good to see Brother Sonny back. Lord, I pray that you'd be with uh, Brother Kraft and Miss Jennifer. Lord, I pray that you'd strengthen them. pray that you'd help them. Lord, thank you for the little babies that you've helped, our our little ones. Lord, I thank you for the good report we got about Joseph today and then also for, uh, for... for the Allen baby, Lord, for, 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 the, for the need there. Lord, thank you that, Lord, the healthy delivery. Pray that you'd be with, uh, be with mom. Lord, I pray that you'd uh, be with uh, 
Brother Larry, and Lord, I pray that you'd help the doctors to know how to treat him. Lord, I pray that wouldn't require surgery. For Brother Danny also, Lord, I pray for him. Pray that, uh, Lord, that you'd res- resolve the issue with his heart. Pray that they'd be able to help him with that. Lord, I, I pray for these other needs for Miss Pamela. Lord, thank you that we got to meet with her today. Lord, thank you for the salvation that you've given to her, that you've opened your uh, word to her. Lord, I pray that you'd help her now, strengthen her. Pray that she'd be able to get uh, involved in church. And I know there's been a lot of difficulties there with her family. Just pray that you'd meet every need. Lord, also for, for Miss Miriam. Lord, what a sweet lady. I pray that you'd heal her. Pray that she'd not be in a lot of pain. Lord, I pray that you'd just strengthen her. And, uh, Lord, I pray that you'd be with her and her and, and Miss Dot and the other ladies as they have prayer meeting even tonight. Lord, that uh, you'd just give them grace and, and meet with them. Lord, I pray that you'd uh, be with the other folks. Lord, for little Asher, I pray that they'd get a good report. Lord, I pray that there'd be nothing serious as they run tests there. Lord, for Mr. Bridges, I pray for his complete recovery. Lord, I pray that you'd be with his family as well. Lord, I pray that you'd meet their need. Lord, thank you for the good report from Miss Rose. pray that you'd help her to continue to get better. Lord, strengthen her, relieve any issues that she has with pain. Lord, for Mr. Tuberville, fighting cancer there, I pray that you'd uh, bless there and help him. And uh, Lord, also for Miss Victoria, Lord, I pray for their for their needs and for the doctors as they treat them. Lord, for the young men and Mr. Brother John taking them to man camp, I pray that that would be good for them. pray that it would be a good experience for those young, young guys. Lord, I pray for Brother Treadway as he comes in tomorrow. Lord, I pray that you give him a safe flight. pray that there would be no complications with the flight. Lord, I pray that you'd help them. And, Lord, I pray that you'd meet with us. Lord, I pray that the meeting Saturday would go well. But, Lord, I pray also for the services on Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Lord, I pray that you'd uh, just speak to our hearts. Pray, Holy Spirit, that you'd work in our lives. Lord, we're going to thank you for what you're going to do. And we're going to praise you even now, Lord, for sending revival. But, Lord, it's not going to come with a man. It's going to come through your word. And it's going to come when we decide to do what we already know. So, God, I pray that you'd uh, just give us a a boost, and, Lord, we'll thank you for that help. Lord, I pray that you'd just bless our service tonight, be with the folks that are out of town, those that are still on vacation. I pray that you'd watch over them as they travel, bring them back safely. And, Lord, we're going to thank you for that in Jesus' name. Amen. Our missionary tonight on the back is Brother Dean Miller, Sr. Brother Miller's in evangelism now, and um, just a couple of things there. Uh, I want to share with you, I want you to, um, I want you to look at that uh, third bulleted point there. The third bulleted point says, God's been able to use me because of you, and I'm happy to report the power of the Holy Spirit's been evidenced greatly in my preaching and teaching and personal soul winning. Like you, there are many attacks of the wicked one, but the Lord is greater in he and I then he and I am seeing victories and blessings in abundance. A couple of prayer requests I ask. Please Pray for a strong body and wise mind to be given to me. Secondly, I've had a tremendous opportunity to see a great number of salvations. However, I have a neighbor who's in their 70s. He's been Catholic all his life, and I've yet to get him to see the need of being saved. Please pray for Jim and Priscilla Kennedy, and I do not know how I could continue the ministry without you. So let's continue to pray for Brother Dean Miller, the evangelist that we support faithfully every week. Well, let's stand together and sing again. Come ahead, Brother DJ. In your hymn books, it'll be page number 329, uh, song 329, The Cleansing Wave. Praise the Lord for the blood of Jesus, and we can be cleansed therein. The cleansing wave on that first verse. Oh, now I see the crimson wave, the fountain deep and wide. Jesus, my Lord, mighty to save, points to his wounded side. The cleansing Blood of blood. 
I plunge and oh, it cleanseth me. Oh, praise the Lord, it cleanseth me. It cleanseth me, yes, cleanseth me. So would you pass these out? I did not pass these out early, but I want to go ahead and you can be seated. And uh, Brother DJ, and if you want to get some help and pass these out, this is really the outline that I've been promising you for the last couple of weeks. I didn't want you to get it because some of you would take it and read it and then just go home. Um, but uh, <laughs> not really. But I want you to have this. I'll have it for the next couple of weeks. Next week it may be a little bit different because since last week I've already added to it. I told you I probably would. But while you're waiting on that, let's turn over to uh, 1 John 2, 15 and 16. Miss Donna, Miss Donna, would you come back to the piano? Do you know, do you know that song from 1 John 2, 15? Is 1 John 2, 15? Love not the world, love. Okay. We're going we're gonna to sing that one. We haven't sung it yet, but we'll sing it tonight. 1 John 2, 15. You know, last, last Wednesday, last Wednesday we were at camp. And uh, Brother Scott Pauling came in to preach, and Brother Paulie said, turn in your Bibles to 1 John chapter number 2. I said, okay, it's Wednesday night. And he preached on Wednesday night from verses 13 and 14, and then on Thursday night he preached from our passage here, 15, 16, and 17. I thought that was quite the coincidence. The Lord knew what he was doing. I guess I needed it for sure. Okay, love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. And the, and the tune goes like this. Love not the world, love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Love not the world, love not the world. Okay, love not the world, love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Love not the world, love not the world. Y'all are doing okay. Let's sing it again. Miss Donna needs a little more practice. Here we go, ready? Love not the world, love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Love not the world, love not the world. Amen. We may sing that again. Thank you. Thank you. First John chapter 2, verses 15. We sang that one. Look at verse number, verse number 16. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world passeth away, and the lust thereof. But he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. Lord, I thank you for the time. Pray that you'd meet with us. Lord, speak to our hearts. Open our, open our ears. And uh, Lord, open our minds that we might learn some things that would help us as we learn what the world is and the things that we need to avoid and how to determine those things in our culture in Jesus' name. Amen. I'm going to get right into it to, to tonight and finish the anchor points. I want you to look at the first page, which starts with love, not the world, and then hopefully we'll get through the, some of the diagnostic questions. And then we're going to begin to make some applications. And I want to try to do that tonight. I know that next Wednesday night, next Wednesday night, uh, Brother Treadway is going to be preaching. And uh, so it's going to be a couple of weeks. I want to cover some of this, and we'll come back and catch it again. Uh, by the way, on that next Wednesday night, on the, on the Wednesday night after this week, the young people will be meeting, uh, 345, meeting here at the church, going soul winning, knocking doors, uh, get a bite to eat, come back, have a, have a quick lesson and some games and stuff with Brother DJ, and then come in here for the service as well because uh, I want you to be in here for the preaching, particularly as we finish up this, uh, this passage. But uh, let's look at the anchor points. I've, I've, if you took notes, which I know that you, I told you not to because I was going to give you this, but if you did take notes, I've already changed it up because I've got a new number one, so I'm going to mess you up. So uh, I want to put this one first. So uh, anchor points, things that we want to consider 
in determining what is the world, things in the world that we want to try to avoid, the things that we don't want to fall in love with. Number one, our anchor point there, number one, our distinctiveness from the world should focus on things that affect our ability to know God and to make him known, key point there, as he really is. And we're going to see that as we go through, to know God as he really is. There is a God out there that folks are promoting as Jehovah God that's not all that God really is. And sometimes we get in trouble uh, with other folks, and that's one of the reasons I wanted to talk to Miss Pamela today because she's been listening to some TV preachers. She said, well, that's what I heard on TV on how to be saved. I said, okay. Well, that's what the Bible teaches. And uh, so she gave me a, a, a confidence that she knows the Lord. She's ready to go to heaven. Uh, and that was a good thing. It was a good thing that, uh, that a person that wasn't raised in church could get that from the Bible. And I was thankful for that. But, you know, there are some folks that aren't preaching Christ as he really is, aren't preaching God as he really is. So that's, that's, uh, that's a key point. That's when we start looking at these di different issues in our culture, what we want to understand that the reason that we are distinctive from the world is so that we can know God and that we can make him known. We can witness and we can talk to folks about the God, the God of the Bible. Number two, this is what we covered last week, and I'm going to go quickly. It was number one last week, but it's number two this week or two weeks ago. Our ability to discern, our ability to discern what the world is, to accurately perceive the world, absolutely depends on our setting aside our personal preference. And then on my notes, I put at least, at least temporarily. Our ability to determine if something is wrong or something is worldly hinges on us setting aside our personal preferences. We looked at Philippians chapter 1, verses 9 through 11. If you'll remember, that's where Paul is praying for that church. And he says, I want your love to abound. And it goes on down, all the way down through, through to verse number 11, that God would get the glory. I want your love to abound. And I want you to have knowledge, and I want you to have understanding, and I want you to know these things so that God gets the glory. And we went over that a couple of weeks ago. I'm not going to do that again. But uh, that prayer request begins with, I want your love to abound. That's what he was saying. Now, that's the, Bartlett, that's the Bartlett Amplified Version. I didn't quote that directly from the King James. But he said, I want your love to abound. Now, do you remember what, what the Lord said were the two great commandments? Love God and Love your neighbor as yourself, right? Those are the two great commandments. He said, on those hang all the law. So we're to love God, we're to love our neighbor as ourselves. So when we come to these issues, well, I don't care what, what the people think. I'm going to do this because I like it. Yeah, if it's going to lead somebody astray, you know, the Bible says that we're to love others as we love ourselves. And so there, there is a consideration there. There is a consideration there, whether or not we like something. Uh, you know, the, the fact that we like something, whether I like or dislike something in my culture, should have no impact on whether or not we determine if it's worldly. Now, again, I, I, I did give you this caveat last week. If we've grown in the faith and grown in the faith and grown in the faith over years and years, there ought to be things in this world that we don't like. And there ought to be things of the Lord that we do like. And so the things of the Lord are things that we do like. And so, you know, the, that, the Holy Spirit helps us in that regard. Number three, the first question that we would want to ask, and we're going to look at a lot of questions tonight, Lord willing. The first question is, does the Bible establish the moral character of the issue? Either by a clear statement or by a clear principle. Does the Bible establish the moral character? You know, if the Bible doesn't say anything about it, if the Bible does not speak directly... Uh, on it, then that's where we get involved in everything else that's in the message. If the Bible says something, then it's settled, you know, either by direct command or by a clear principle. Uh, our illustration for that, you remember, was, you know, the Bible says, thou shalt not kill. Okay, I can't kill, but can I hire a hitman? I got enough money to do that. Well, of course you can't. You know, that's, the, that's, the, that's applying a principle. You know, the Bible doesn't say you can't hire a hitman. The Bible says just that I can't kill. Okay. So we're going to use some reasoning ability to come to some conclusions along that line. Not nearly that easy, though. Number four, no physical objects in their natural state as God has made them are inherently evil. When God made everything, it was good. That's in Genesis chapter 1, right there at the end of chapter 1, 131, on the sixth day. God 
saw that it was all very good. Now, physical creation does groan and travail because of the curse, but physical creation did not become evil. Okay, I don't know that we'll get to this application, but God did not create the tobacco plant to be evil. You say, what good is it? I don't know. But it's not inherently evil. A marijuana plant is not inherently evil. You know, the, the barley that they use to make beer or whatever, you know, that plant is not inherently evil. God did not create anything to be inherently evil. Oh, well, that's wicked. Look at number, number, number five. Number five there. No basic human ability or biological function or aspiration is intrinsically evil. No basic human ability, biological function, or aspiration is intrinsically evil. Let me say this. Not everything that lost people do is a matter of worldliness that Christians have to reject. Okay? A silly, a silly illustration. Um, but a man gets up in the morning, you know, gets ready to go to work, eats his Wheaties, kisses his wife, Goes off to work. A lost man. Well, bless God, a lost man does that. So I can't eat Wheaties, I can't kiss my wife. Because lost people do that. No, no. Just because lost people, that doesn't mean that anything that a lost person does is inherently evil. Um, okay? Let me make, let me, let me make a, an, 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 an application here. Uh, the desire, okay, this one, fits, this one fits my life. The desire to want to sing well. That desire, that aspiration, that's not a bad thing if it's for the right reason. Now, the, 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 the goal of trying to be your best for the Lord, that's not a bad thing. Now, a person can stand and sing, can stand and sing a special, and they can have the right music, they can have the right words, they can have the right expression. It just looks great. But if it's all about in their heart, if it's about them, if it's about, oh, well, I want the attention, then that can become evil. And that's something that, that uh, church musicians have to fight. I was thinking this week about some of the famous rock musicians, and I'm not going to mention them. Maybe pop and country and western. I'm not going to mention them. And I apologize. A couple of weeks ago, I mentioned a song that, that I had heard, and, uh, you know, and I used it for an illustration. I mentioned the song, and then folks were texting me, Thanks, Brother Al. I can't get that out of my mind now. I, I, I felt badly, poorly about that, but... You know, so I'm not going to mention these folks, but I know a, a lot of country and western, a lot of pop stars, they start their singing career in church. When they're young, they begin singing in church, and they like the attention, and they like the glory, and it moves to, it moves to, uh, to some evil things. can be evil. Um, how about this one? A, a, a young lady, a teenage girl, a young lady's desire to get married and have a family. That's not a bad thing. That's not a bad thing. A young man's desire to have a wife and have a family, that's not a bad thing. Now, it, it can be made evil if it's taken out of context and at the wrong time, the wrong person, done in a wrong way, sure. But that desire is not, it's not a bad thing. You know, the desire, what is it, the girls? I want to have a nice home with a white picket fence and flowers and, you know, the little thing that, uh, and then they get married and it doesn't turn out that way. Uh, but I remember, I remember, I've, I've, I've remember, I, I don't remember exactly which girl, but there have been girls in high school, at the school from time to time, say, we talk about the second coming, but, okay, brother, I don't want the Lord to come back yet. I want to get married. I want to have a family. And, you know, that was years ago. They've, they're married and have a family. They're probably wishing now that the Lord would come back. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, but that desire is not a bad thing. That desire is not a bad thing. Number six that I have on tonight's list. Number six. The world can take good creations and turn them into objects that are inherently evil. We mentioned last week or two weeks ago a work of art. 
You know, the, the, the material that that work of art is made out of is not evil. But an artist can make that into evil. God gave us music. Music can be used for evil purposes. We'll, we're, that's going to be one of our applications, and we'll talk more about that. But man can take something that God has created for good and turn it into something that is inherently evil. Number seven on your list. Our thoughts and behaviors, when focused on the wrong act, objects or purposes, are inherently evil. Our thoughts and behavior, when focused on wrong, wrong objects or purposes, are evil. When we take the good things that God's given us and we apply them for a wrong purpose, for self. Okay, we looked at this last time. I want you to look at it again. Turn over to Matthew chapter 15. Matthew chapter number 15. Matthew chapter number 15. Matthew 15, I want you to look down at verse number 19. Matthew 15, verse number 19. The Bible says in Matthew 15, 19, For out of the heart proceed evil thoughts, murders, adulteries, fornications, thefts, false witness, blasphemies. These are the things which defile a man. Okay, thoughts and behavior when focused on the wrong objects, wrong purpose are inherently evil. I, I, I said that a basic number five, a basic human ability or biological function or aspiration is not intrinsically evil. I use the desire to be married, the desire for the physical relationship. That's not intrinsically evil. But adultery is, fornication is. When it's not done God's way in God's time, yeah, it's evil. It's evil. Here's another thought. I may have put it there on the notes. Um, yeah, our natural tendency is to imitate the behavior of other people. Our natural tendency is to imitate. If we're around something long enough, this is why we have to be careful with being around the world. If we're around something long enough, and we see it, and we see it, and we see it, and we see it. Won't be long to where, you know, it's like that song, Getting Used to the Dark. Uh, okay, it's just, not, it's just not as bad as it used to be anymore. It's just not bad. And if we're not careful, we'll just wind up participating in that. That's why we need to separate ourselves. First John, I'm sorry, First Corinthians 5, I'll put that in your notes. I'm going to read it to you. First Corinthians 9, I'm sorry, First Corinthians 5, 9 through 11. He said, I wrote unto you in an epistle not to company with fornicators. Yet not all together with the fornicators of the world or with the covetous or extortioners or with idolaters, for then must your needs go out of the world. The Holy Spirit has Paul right here. He says, I don't want you hanging around these folks. But he says, you know, you've got to be around some of them. If you're going to witness to them, if you're going to have a testimony, if you're going to lead them to Christ, you've got to be around them. He said, yet not all together with the fornicators. For then you must needs go out of the world. But verse number 11 says, But now I've written to you not to keep company. Don't keep company. He says, If any man that's called a brother be a fornicator. He said, You're out in the world. You can't, you can't help but be around those folks. You know, but if there's a brother that's doing that, if a brother that's a fornicator or a covetous or an idolater or a railer or a drunkard or an extortioner with such an one know not to eat, Okay, so when a brother goes into sin, we warn them, but we don't hang around those folks. You may have to work around those folks. God wants us to be a witness and a testimony. But we have to be careful. We have to be careful. All right, number eight, the world's communications. All right, that word communications, I want us to think about this now. The world communicates. The world's communications, that's interactions. That's not just talking. That's not just texting that's not just getting on Facebook or Instagram or whatever. That's not just, it includes that, but it's not just. The world communicates. The communication of the world is in the worldly stuff. It's in the worldly music. That the world is communicating. 
The world is communicating through the music. The world is communicating through the movies. The world is communicating through the television shows. The world is communicating through the teaching and public education system. The world is communicating. Okay, so don't just think of it as a conversation when we talk about communications here. All right, let's look at it. The world's communications, interactions, exchange of ideas are often essentially evil. The world's communication, the music, the movies, the television programs, the social media, often, often it's evil. I was thinking about this just this afternoon. I don't know how all this works, but I just heard something about that guy that was trying to buy Twitter, and now he doesn't want to buy Twitter because a lot of the stuff that was in Twitter, it wasn't even people. It was bots. It was robots just responding. My soul, if that's the truth, and I guess it is, that, that people aren't responding to tweets, other computers, artificial intelligent, are responding to tweets does that not give an opportunity for the devil to put in writing in, in, in tweets or whatever to put his views and his opinion? And folks will think, well, all the world thinks this way, and it's this way, and it's the devil doing that. Communications there. Number eight, communications. The world's communications are often essentially evil. Number nine, various forms of communication are important ways that the world, this is what the world does with those communications. Number one, it identifies itself. You know, there's no doubt with the music. There's no doubt if it's worldly music. I mean, they, they, they don't make any bones about it. We'll say more about that in the, in the weeks to come. The, the forms of communication is how the world maintains itself, how it expresses itself, how it changes itself, modifies itself, how it spreads its influence through the music, through the... <laughs> You know, even with the Disney movies, you say, well, it's a Disney movie. Well, you remember years ago, the thing, I don't remember the thing. I just, it came to my mind and I didn't want to research it. But there was a, there was a cartoon with, um, I think it's Pocahontas. And they, they said something that in the smoke signals, there, there was some, there was some foul, foul language in the smoke signals with, with Pocahontas. Now, I don't know. I just remember reading about that. I didn't go watch Pocahontas to see, okay? But I have done this with our grandkids when they've been at home. You know, we'll have a movie night, and we get a movie, and, and you know, it's kind of a cartoon. And I'm looking. I don't even know what it was. But we were looking at one, and it was supposed to be clean, and, and it was clean. But just what they were talking, just the philosophy, I'm thinking, that's not right. That's not right. And kids don't understand where that's going. But I could see what the writers were trying to teach the children, this worldly pagan philosophy that the, that the writers were trying to teach the children. And there it is. The world communicates, but it's a cartoon. She's not dressed right. What does that communicate to our little girls? But I don't want to wear the costume like the, like, the, like the person on. And so they get used to the dark. And if we're not careful, we get used to the dark. The world communicates. Number 10, all of us are inclined to some form of worldliness. All of us are inclined to some form of worldliness. If we say that we're not, if we say that we're, that we're not, then we are because we got pride right there. <laughs> you know, uh, look, uh, this is not, when we start making these applications, this is not for the folks here to point at those folks. Yeah, God, God's getting you, isn't he? Or these folks say, yeah, God's getting you. I saw that one. I know it's not for us to point fingers. It's for us to point fingers this way. Because all of us can use some improvement. And by the way, those of us that have been around for a while, those of us that are maturing the faith, we ought to be thankful that there are some folks that need to grow. And we ought not look at them, yeah, I hope you're getting this, worldly person. We ought not, and I don't think, believe that we have that anywhere in this room. But I want us to guard against that. I want us to guard against that in our church. We're talking, we, we started that on Sunday night. didn't get very far because of time, but we'll, we'll say more about that in the weeks to come. 
from that passage in Philippians. So we're all inclined to it. Number, number 11, any earthly activity can become worldly when used for selfish, sinful purposes. Anything, anything that we do can be worldly. Anything that we do. Okay, so think of the, think of the best things that you and I can do tomorrow. What are the best things that you and I can the, the, the best thing that you and I can do tomorrow when we get up? The best thing that we can do. I can't think of anything better than study the word, have a time of prayer with the Lord and meet with the Lord and worship the Lord. Tell other folks about him. I can't think of anything better to do than that, can you? If you can, let me know. I'm gonna add it to my notes. But I can't think of anything better to do, okay? But you remember over in Philippians chapter 1? Go ahead and turn over there uh, so, so you'll stay awake. Philippians chapter 1. When we were in Philippians chapter 1 many moons ago. Philippians 1 verse number 16. We're talking about preaching. We're talking about preaching. Paul says, the one preached Christ of contention, not sincerely. So a good thing to, to preach the word of God. A great thing to, to give the gospel but to give the gospel in the wrong way, to preach the gospel of contention, not sincerely, it's a good thing made worldly. A good thing made worldly. You remember the Pharisees? The Bible talks about the Pharisees for a pretense. They make long prayers. The Bible says that they thought they would be heard for their much speaking you remember the, the, the story about the Pharisee and the publican and the prayers? A good thing. A good thing can be made worldly. You know, so if we, you know, if we try to, glor- you know, singing, okay, uh, you know, I grew up at church. I grew up and, you know, dad was a song leader and every once in a while I would get to sing. And as a young person, I knew then and I know now, I wasn't singing for the right reason. I was singing hoping somebody would pat me on the back. I was hoping I would get some accolades. When I got to be a teenager, I was hoping Jackie was listening and hoping she was impressed. Yeah, she's laughing like she is now. (laughs) And I heard myself, you know, recorded. Back in the days when it was reel to reel, that's how we recorded our services, reel to reel. These kids have no idea what I'm talking about. But uh, real to real, I was passing by the sound booth one afternoon, and they were, somebody was playing the service, and I heard myself sing. I said, you've got to be kidding. That is horrible. That is horrible. So that burst my bubble real quickly there. God knew what he was doing, having me walk past the sound room at that moment. But anything that we do can become worldly if we use it in rebellion against God or we use it for selfish, selfish purposes. Listen, understand this. Worldliness, worldliness versus godliness, and that's what we're talking about. We're talking about being godly or being worldly. Love not the world, so we want to love God. When we... It's not, just, it's not just what's on the outside. It's not just smiling when we sing and singing every note right and having the right music and the right lyrics. It's more than that. It's what's on the inside. And that's what we're talking about, church. Go to Matthew chapter 23. Matthew chapter 23. In Matthew chapter 23, this is a familiar passage again. The Lord's speaking here. Some folks in our culture in 21st century Christianity want to say, well, you know, what's on the outside doesn't matter. It's what's on the heart. God looks on the heart. He doesn't look on the outside. Well, that's not what the Bible teaches. Matthew chapter 23, look down at verse number 25. If you've got a red letter Bible, this is it. You know, this is Jesus when he's preaching. He says, woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites. For you make clean the outside of the cup and of the platter. But within they are full of extortion and excess. Thou blind Pharisee, cleanse first that which is within the cup and platter. That the outside of them may be clean also. he He was rebuking them not for dirty dishes. 
He was rebuking them because the problem with them was what was on the inside. I mean, on the outside, they looked good. On the outside, they looked good. He said, but you got to clean up what's on the inside. It's in the heart. Look at verse number 26 again. Cleanse first that which was within the cup and platter, that the outside of them may be clean. Clean up what's on the inside, church. Let's clean up what's on the inside, and it's going to show up on the outside. That's what that verse is talking about right there. The Lord is definitely not saying, hey, the externals, our appearance does not matter. That's not the correction he gave. So worldliness versus godliness is not just a merely of, not merely just a question of what's on the outside. What's on the outside, the externals definitely are fruits of what's going on in the heart. Number 11, number 11, this, is, this just kind of grows right out of that. True holiness proceeds from the inside out. True or number 12. How did I get my numbers off? Okay. Number 12 on your list, right? True holiness proceeds from the inside out. I'll have to go back and look at my numbers. True holiness proceeds from the inside out. Romans 12, 2. Do you remember what that says? And be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Be transformed. We're transformed by the renewing of our mind. Okay. So we got, we got five minutes. We got five minutes. Let's look, at some, let's look at some diagnostic questions. These are some questions. These are not perfect. These are not perfect questions. But I've got these questions. And uh, these are questions that we would ask to determine, okay, is this, a, is this worldly or is it not worldly? Questions about knowing God. And, and I put X in there, using this kind of like algebra where you, you, X represents, you know, you plug in the number for X. Here we're going to plug in the issue. Does this issue, whatever the issue is, plug in whatever issue you have a question about. Well, I don't know what the, I don't, you know, I can't find a verse. What about this, what about this issue? Does X show ignorance of God's true character? Would my culture do that if they knew God as he really is? Okay, I'm just going to go ahead. We're, we're going to kind of walk through this. Uh, and you do not have to tell Brother Treadway that I did this. But we've got Brother Treadway on our prayer sheet. His picture. He has a goatee. I remember last time he was here, he was shaven and he, you know, and, and, he, and he messed up and so he just shaved it off. He said, it'll grow out before I get home. So apparently his wife likes his goatee. Okay, this is one that's easy. This is one that's easy. I think we're all agreed here, but I just want to kind of, okay, is facial hair, facial hair or grooming of facial hair, is that something that's worldly? I think we're okay with it. I've got a picture. I started to bring it tonight and throw it up there, but... Uh, it's a picture back in the 80s whenever we did, uh, we had a beard growing contest here at the church, and I had a beard from, for the fall, and I shaved it off after it was all over. The, well, I shaved it off after Christmas. After I went home and everybody at home saw it for Christmas, I said, okay, I'm shaving it off. My wife didn't want me to shave it off, but I was tired of messing with it. Um, and so I've had one. Any of you men remember the beard growing contest? We had that beard growing contest. Yeah, I, you know, I didn't come close to winning. I did not come close to winning. Uh, the longest or the thickest or whatever. So does, 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 does a goatee show ignorance of God's true character? Would my culture have a goatee if they knew God as he really is? Is a goatee something that our culture uses to suppress the knowledge of God as he really is? Would it help or hinder my growth in knowing God as he really is? Would it help or hinder my ability to make God known to others as he really is? Now, that was really the only one that might be a question in those first, four, first five, knowing God. Is it going to help or is it going to hinder my ability to tell other folks? What if somebody else doesn't like a goat? Man, I think that's worldly. I think that's ungodly. I think that's out of hell. <laughs> Number, number next, concerning its moral character. Does the Bible say anything about the moral character of a of goatee, either directly or, print, or in principle? Okay, Jesus had a beard, so that settles it. 
Jesus had a beard, so, you know, we can't say, well, for men to have facial hair, that is, that is a serious issue. Now, for women to have facial hair, that might be a different thing. But for men to have facial hair, I don't think we can say that. I don't think we can say that, okay, well, that's always worldly. Okay, so really, we could settle the issue right there. But let's go on. Let's go on. What kind of people originated to go to you? I don't know. What was its original function? Okay, I don't know the answer to these questions. Has that function changed? Does it still function the same way? Um, Okay, skip on down. I don't know that, it, that anything in concerning function and culture would actually fit for the goatee, maybe the character of it, maybe. Okay, but let's go for a second time. Let's go to the associations. Is the moral character of that inherent, or does it come from association with some part of culture? How strong is that association? Is it associated with something? Maybe in years past it was. I don't think it is today. I don't think anybody has a problem with it. Well, I know you folks don't because nobody complained last year when he was here. Nobody complains about men in our church that have beards or goatees or whatever. You know. But I would think that in, in, in years past, I don't, I don't know, maybe it's just personal experience. I remember when we were young, we saw a picture of my dad, and he had a mustache. And he was singing with a quartet, a gospel quartet. <gasps> dad, you had a mustache. And I was wondering in my mind, okay, is that, okay, I didn't know what to think because maybe some of the folks in, in, that I had seen wearing a mustache weren't godly people. I don't know, but it just raised, oh, my, Dad's got a, Dad had a mustache when he was younger. You know, these things we, are things that we would have to think about, things that we would consider. Now, again, if the Bible says anything, the Bible, through principle, and some of the issues that we're going to talk about, we're going to look at some of these things, and we'll see from Scripture Okay, here's the scripture and here's the principle. This is why we do. Now, God does not expect every one of us to be at the same place in our walk with him. And I'm going to say it again, church. We ought to have some folks that are baby Christians, some folks that are new Christians, or some folks that haven't been taught. We ought to have some coming to our church. We ought to have them. And we ought not be, we ought not, uh, uh, be fearful of that. We ought to try to help those folks and, 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 and allow the Lord to work in their heart. And allow the Holy Spirit to do things in their life. And that's a, that's a wonderful thing when the, when the Lord does that. But, um, you know, back to that, that, uh, that, that, that facial hair thing. Looking at, looking at uh, okay, I'll just be honest with you. Uh, what was the, the, the group from up in Shreveport and all the men had those long beards? D Duck Dynasty people? The Duck Dynasty people? The, I don't know, you know who I'm talking about? Robinson, Robinson, yeah, there you go. You know, I'm thinking, you know, they, they got long hair and they got the long beard and they're preaching the gospel. I'm thinking, okay, something doesn't fit there. Something doesn't fit there. You know, dress like a, dress like a biker dude, looking like a biker dude. And it's like, oh, you know, something, doesn't, some, something doesn't register right there for me. Uh, I think about folks that take their grooming cues from what the world's doing. Yesterday, I went to, I went to see Miss, uh, I, I couldn't find Miss Miriam. And so I tried to call Miss Dodd a couple of times. I couldn't get her to answer her phone. So I just ran over there. Okay, Miss Dodd, I can't find Miss Miriam. And uh, so she said, well, we'll go down and find it. They wouldn't, of course, they wouldn't tell with the HIPAA rules. They wouldn't tell me where she was or anything about it. But when I was going back to see Miss Dodd, one of the ladies come down in a wheelchair. And she just smiled at me and said Hello. And she had the bright purple hair. I mean, just bright purple hair. I'm thinking, oh, my, oh, my. It looked like she'd just been to the beauty parlor, and she was proud of her hairdo. Now, some of it wasn't purple, but it was, you know, I don't know what she was trying to say right there. But, um, you know, I don't know that, uh, I don't know that if, she was a, if she was a Christian lady, if she, if she tried to talk to anybody looking like that, I don't think anybody would listen to her because it's like, oh, my, this is crazy looking right here. This lady is out of her mind. Well, is our goal to, to honor God, or is our goal to look trendy and to look fashionable and look cute, or look at, look 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 like the popular crowd? You know, I, I just <laughs> there's a lot of stuff that we'll that we'll talk about. And, and you say, is it? Well, I don't know if it's worldly necessarily, but some of the stuff that I see is just like, where did that come from? Where did that come from? Okay, they're watching the wrong movie there. 
They're watching the wrong things there. Uh, is it necessarily sinful? Some of these things uh, may not be sinful, but we want to make sure that we have a testimony that is above reproach, above reproach, so that when we talk to folks, they'll know, hey, there's a difference in those folks. Well, we're going to have fun with it, or at least I'm going to. I don't know if y'all are or not, but I'm going to have fun with some of these applications. Uh, next time, we're going to talk about music. You know, that'll be, uh, that'll be some controversy, I think, but we'll talk about music in a couple of weeks. Lord, I thank you for your word. Thank you that we can open your word, and, and now we're going to begin to look at principles, and we're going to begin to ask questions, and we're going to look at scriptural principles and apply them to our lives into different areas. I pray that you'd help us, Lord, to, as, as we said before, and Lord, as we've uh, mentioned, Lord, I pray that, that folks would say, hey, God, if you'll speak to me, I'll listen. God, if, if you'll show me, I'll listen. God, I want to be, I, I want to serve you. I want to be pleasing to you. And God, would you help us to realize that when we're pleasing to you, when we do live as best we can to please you, that, Lord, you make our life much more pleasing to us, that we are satisfied with where you have us. We're satisfied with the trials we're going through because we know that we're trying to serve you. We're trying to love you. And, Lord, that's what I want for our folks, for Central Baptist Church. Not that we're trying to be something that we're not. Not that we're trying to look better or be better. Lord, we just want to love you and serve you. And Lord, I know that if we'll do that, that you will bless our church and you will bless us individually. God, we're going to thank you for that in Jesus' name. Amen. Ms. Donna, let's do it again. Let's stand together and sing Love Not the World. Love Not the World, neither the things that are in the world. Here we go, ready? Love not the world, love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Love not the world, love not the world. Thank you. We'll see you on Saturday and again on Sunday. We will not have choir practice. No choir practice tonight.